and Savage Orlando Magic.com. Hey Darren, it's good to see you. Haven't seen you in a while. Just just how are how are you feeling? Uh, you know, just uh, since we, since we haven't chatted with you in some time. Um, I'm feeling better, I guess. Uh, still trying to deal with you know this lower back issue. Um, you know, I was trying to feel better, but uh, it's, it's getting better little by little. Josh Robbins, The Athletic. Terrence, you're used to being, uh, to playing for something this time of year. Uh, how have you dealt with uh, the franchise's change in direction and um, ending a season like this? Um, I mean, it happens, man. Uh, just the, the way the season went, um, I've been a part of teams like this before, so, you know, he's got to finish strong, uh, no matter what it looks like, he's got to go, uh, be professional, just get through it, make your way through it and just, uh, you know, get ready for that off season. Philip Rossman, Reich, Orlando Magic Daily. Terrence, um, you know, with with your interactions with the team, I'm sure you're kind of being put into that veteran role as, as you know one of the one of the older guys on older guys on the team. Which you know you're still a young guy, obviously, but um, with this team with this team being so young, what what has that experience been like to kind of be a mentor to some of these younger guys and, and to watch them watch them and celebrate their growth in these final games? Um, it's just been different. This is uh, you know for me probably one of the newer experiences I've had. You know been a while since I've been here. You know, I've been here when things were kind of, you know, one way and, you know, being set in that for so long and uh, not being the oldest guy around, you know, it was, it was took a little bit of getting used to, but um, hasn't been bad. You know, it's just a new experience. Uh, just, you know, taking it day by day. What, what have you done to kind of, sorry, sorry about that. Um, um, what have you kind of done to kind of, kind of stay involved with the team and, and be, be that leader with them, even if you're not on the court helping them out? I just talk to them. Um, just let them know. I know that, you know, it's a tough situation that we're in right now. It's not fun, but, uh, you know, you're going to look back on this in three or four years when you get my age, which is closer than you all think, uh, that this is one of the things that, you know, kind of builds that character and helps you build, helps you grow. Um, yeah, you know, we're out there trying to, they're trying to figure it out when the game, but at the same time, guys like Cole, Mo, um, RJ, Chuma, you know, those guys are really starting to come into their own, find their niche, uh, get comfortable with, you know, how you're supposed to play every night. You know, they're, they're getting all this experience that you can't, you know, replicate or duplicate, you know, just practice. So um, it, it sucks to, you know, you have to kind of look at it like that. But, you know, this is uh, this would be good for their personal growth, you know, in years down the line. So, uh, you know, this they're going to go through a lot of highs. They're going to go through a lot of lows, this being one of them. Um, but you know, I, I think they'll be they'll, they'll be good with the way that they handle things going forward. Dan Savage, Terrence, you, you touched on a little bit, but you know, obviously, you know, with the team the way it is in the standings, there's no postseason they're playing for right now. But over these final four games, for for young guys, just just how valuable can that game experience be, especially as you're getting ready, you know, in some of those cases for their first off season in the NBA. Um, you, I mean, with younger guys, you just want to get the, the, the right perspective, you know. Uh, it's tough right now. I, I, I've been in these situations, you know, coming my first few years in the league where you know, your team's not playing that great and, you know, the season's pretty much over. And you just have to find a way to, to find benefits throughout the, the rest of the remainder of the season. So for these guys, I know that, you know, hey, this is, you got, it's still, you know, we, it might not, you know, look the greatest. It's a little grim right now, but, you know, we still, there's other teams that we're playing. Um, other, there's other, there's chances to to make impressions on other people around the league. There's there's so many opportunities out there for guys to create a name and and show other people, other organizations that you know they're figuring it out and that they're becoming a good player. So um, it's just certain things you gotta look at uh, in a perspective like that. But you know you can't just come here and just you know just shut it down and and, and not give any effort because you know that that almost speaks louder to you know, your character to these other teams and, you know, just finishing the season. So uh, it's just trying to get them to understand the right perspectives and, and just understand, you know, that this is just more than basketball. It's a business. And, you know, these guys are young and I think they're going to do a good job of learning that. But, you know, these are one of those, those, uh, one of those 
those testimonies that you got to get through, man, that you got to fight through, one of those things that, you know, is going to make you better when you're done with it. Josh Robbins. You've seen a lot of approaches toward player development in your career with different coaching staffs. What's your sense of how this coaching staff, uh, how, how, how well do they approach it? Um, you know, the coaches are professionals, man. You know, they, they have a lot of history in this league. They, they've seen good teams, good players come through. They've seen bad players come through. And, you know, they, they try to give us the right direction to go in the head and how to, you know, prepare for every game, how to be professional. So, um, they're doing a good job, man. They're, they're doing what they can. I mean, it, it's been tough for everybody, man. It's, it's been a it's been a crazy season for us. So, uh, you know, everybody's trying to figure it out. Everybody's trying to maintain. So, it's just kind of, it's been tough. But you know, I think the coach is doing a good job. Philip Rossman, Reich. Um, I know you said you're you're feeling a little bit better. Um, but what's your plan for the rest of the season? Are you going to be on the road trip? Or are you hoping to play before the in, in one of these final four games? Um, right now, I'm just trying to get healthy, man. Um. This is the first time I ever had a, a back issue, and um, this is all new to me. Like I, I mean, I turned thirty and threw my back out, and I, I never really thought about, you know, what that means to really have back issues. So, uh, I think I'm just gonna try to just get healthy, man. Just make sure I'm back to to me and T. Ross, and uh, let's go from there. Josh Robbins. Along those lines, uh, Terrence, to what degree have you started to develop a, a uh, plan for yourself this summer? In other words, what are some of the areas aside from your health that you want to work on? Um, it's so, so crazy. Last night I was actually talking to one of our, our, the coaches about, you know, how can I become a better shooter? I mean, I know it sounds cliche, but um, I feel like that's actually just more room for growth. I mean, and uh, I think, you know, I, I, I approached off seasons you know, a certain way, but I think this this offseason, I'm going to try to approach it differently so I can kind of put myself in um, more uncomfortable situations, kind of allow myself for growth in certain areas when it comes to, you know, shooting, handling the ball, um, just understanding the mindset, just trying to, you know, use my my smarts and my, my brain to, to become better and um, just try to stick to my niche, man, um, do what makes me great, so. Uh, it's it's a uh, I'm still in the the blueprint mode, but uh, I have some ideas about you know areas I want to get better. In. When uh, Booch and I think Aaron and Evan were traded, you sent out a tweet. Uh, I think it was with a GIF. GIF. Uh, yeah, I'm the captain now, and that's I think really true, uh, Terrence. How much joy do you get being really? Uh, the elder statesman of this team and, and the person that young guys are looking up to as an example? Um, I think, you know, is kind of one, I think the one thing I'm kind of, I'm understanding a little bit better is the fact that when you come to this league young and you, you do ask questions like guys, are, you know, the young guys really do look up to the older guys in a way where it's kind of like where they might not, you know, go up to you up front and be like, yo, how do I do this? How do I do that? But you can kind of pick and choose the moments where you kind of want to drop knowledge on people. So I think that's been the aspect that I kind of been enjoying because now it just kind of takes me back to, you know, all the game and knowledge that, you know, some of my, my vets kind of gave me. And uh, it's just weird seeing that, that transition from, you know, young guy to old guy. And I'm right in the middle of that. So uh, I think just me realizing you know, where I'm at in my career, where I'm at, you know, in this organization and uh, trying to fit in. Uh, yeah, I'm just one of those other guys who, you know, I try to keep things light, but at the same time, uh, I always try to, you know, drop knowledge and truth when I can. So I think that's been, you know, the one thing I kind of enjoy so far. By the way, in the real world, you still are a young man. <laughs> hey, trust me, it, it, but that's how I feel. But in basketball years, man, nah, I've been playing this game my whole life. I just turned 30. I've been spent my entire life, 30 years, or pretty much 27, 20, 28 years trying to get to where I'm at now. So uh, it's definitely a grind. I feel like gray hair is just about to start popping up, you know, anywhere right now. But, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm enjoying the process, man. It's, it's, a, it's been a great journey. Those veterans in Toronto were – who were some of the guys who dropped the most knowledge on you? Kyle Lowry, DeMar DeRozan, Rudy Gay, um, Damari Carroll, 
uh, Aaron Gray, who's really he was a good mentor for me. Landry Fields. Um, those are the guys, man. I remember John Sammons, Chuck, Chuck Hayes. Those, those are like, and then Mikael Peaches, he was there towards, you know, a little bit. But uh, those, those guys, they had a, a lot of knowledge. They played with a lot of good players. They played on really good teams. And just me growing up, I was a huge basketball fan. So I, I, I you know, I, I, I was more knowledgeable than I felt like a lot of other guys coming into the league at that time. I knew a lot about the history of the game and players from back then. So I would, I would talk to these guys about, you know, who's the oldest player you played with, who was one of your favorite vets that you had on your team, and you know, tell me some story about this and that. So it, for me, it was fun. It was like, you know, that had that starstruck moment going through my, my first few years of just talking to these guys I've looked up to for so long. And now they're, they're telling me their experiences. Um, and it's just, it's just fun, man. Now I'm, I'm in, you know, that position to, to do the same and, and kind of carry on that tradition of, you know, spitting knowledge to the young guys. And uh, it's just good, man. Not a lot of guys get to make it to this position that I'm in. So you know, I'm just trying to be, you know, thankful that, I'm about to finish year nine. Dan Savage. Terrence, Cliff was saying, you know, it's easy for a, t a team to have a belief in, a, in the way they do things when, when things are going well, but it's, you know, more challenging when things aren't going well to still maintain that belief. You know, your group over the, the past two years, uh, you know, had struggles in seasons and still found their way to, to two straight playoff berths. How do you keep that same belief in a young group, some of them who haven't experienced the success that, that you experienced, uh, you know, with the way of doing things and, and maintaining sort of that winning mindset and culture? Um, everybody just has to be bought in. Um, and it starts with the leadership. The leadership has to set the tone, you know, all the way down. And um, yeah, it, it's definitely harder to do that sometimes when, you know, you hit adversity, but that's what separates the good teams and the great teams and the teams that make it and teams that, you know, grow. So, uh, I mean, right now, it's, it seems like, you know, it's a tough season, but we, from here, we don't really have anywhere else to go but, but up. So, uh, it all starts in, a, you know, a couple of weeks when, you know, this thing ends. You got to, we got to find a way to get back to neutral, you know, reset, and then, you know, start that grind again. All right, we'll wrap things up there. Thank you for your time, Terrence. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.